Dutch processed cocoa powder can cost two to three times the price of natural cocoa powder, and you'll find tons of videos and articles online claiming that Dutch cocoa is worth the extra cost. But is it really? To find out, I'm gonna bake some chocolate muffins with both types of cocoa and compare the results. Let's see if the Dutch cocoa powder is really worth it. Let's start with the basics. There are two types of cocoa powder, Dutch processed and natural cocoa powder. According to King Arthur, natural cocoa is simply unsweetened chocolate that has been ground into a powdered form. It retains the slightly bitter and acidic taste that is naturally present in the cocoa beans. And because it's derived straight from unsweetened chocolate, it's usually the cheaper option on the supermarket shelf. The other type is Dutch cocoa powder. Dutch cocoa powder is processed with an alkaline solution, which reduces its acidity and makes it darker in color and less bitter in flavor. This extra processing adds cost, making Dutch cocoa the pricier cocoa powder option. Now that we understand these two types of cocoa powder, there's four questions I wanna answer in this video. Number one, is it even possible to tell the difference between Dutch and natural cocoa powder in a blind taste test? Question two, do I actually prefer the taste of Dutch cocoa and how significant is the difference? Three, how significant is the effect of blooming the cocoa powder and will it affect which one I prefer? Blooming is the process of mixing cocoa powder with a hot liquid before it's added to a recipe. It's said that blooming helps activate the cocoa powder and make it more flavorful. And I stumbled across one final question that I didn't originally anticipate. Question four, are you sure the cocoa powder you're using is actually what you think it is? That last question might sound a little strange, but all will be explained in due course. Without further ado, let's get into the muffin taste test. My test here is gonna be with a double chocolate muffin, except in the name of science, I've omitted the chocolate chips, making this a slightly dull single chocolate muffin. I've omitted the chocolate chips to better isolate the cocoa powder variable. To make these, I made one master batch of muffin mix with no cocoa powder. Then I separated them out and added the cocoa powder separately. I added hot water to bloom the bloom samples and added cold water to the unbloomed samples to make sure they have the same water content. I've got the four muffins here, the Dutch bloomed, Dutch unbloomed, natural bloomed, and natural unbloomed. I'm gonna blindfold myself. Hannah's gonna come in and shuffle the muffins around and then I'll give you my impressions. Okay, here's sample number one. It smells like a chocolate muffin. Sample one there, it tastes like a chocolate muffin. Without something to compare to, it's pretty hard. I'm gonna move on to sample number two. If I had to guess sample number two just tastes a little bit less chocolatey than sample number one, they both taste a little bit acidic. Maybe that's the natural cocoa powder, I'm not entirely sure. I'm gonna move on to number three here. This tastes a little bit less acidic, but I wanna say it tastes less chocolatey. It just tastes, I'd say these two are kinda, I don't know, I'm gonna have to run through them all again. Sample four tastes nicer than sample number three. It just tastes a little bit smoother in flavor. Sample number two compared to these two tastes way more chocolatey. Going back through in this direction, sample number two is definitely my favorite. These two just didn't taste quite as good. For me, sample number two is the clear winner here. It just has that nice deep chocolate flavor and it's really well balanced. Exactly what I'm looking for in a chocolate muffin. Number one is definitely a runner up. It had the same kind of qualities as sample two, just not quite as intense, but you know, it's a really subtle difference. These two definitely tasted more subdued compared to these samples. They weren't terrible by any means, but if I had to pick, this is definitely my favorite and this is definitely the runner up. I had Hannah try the muffins too and well, have a listen. This one definitely has the most like dark chocolate taste to it. This one is my favorite. This one is second. This one is my least favorite. So the winner from the muffin test was interestingly the Sun Valley Natural Cocoa Powder, which was the cheapest cocoa I could find in the supermarket. And it was up against this, Donovan's Premium Dutch Cocoa Powder. Now remember that last question from the beginning of the video? Are you sure the cocoa powder you're using actually is what you think it is? Well, what you just saw was the second time I ran this entire muffin experiment, because the first time I tried it, I also declared Natural Cocoa Powder as the winner. Two and four are definitely the least flavorful. They definitely have more muted flavors and that chocolate flavor isn't as present. Between one and three, it's tighter. One and three definitely tastes more chocolatey and more enjoyable. The bloomed Dutch was my least favorite, but the unbloomed was my favorite. Do you have a second favorite or not? This one, which was the regular bloomed. 
Now, in this first experiment, I used a different brand. In this experiment, the regular bloomed cocoa powder we're both referring to is this, Pam's Cocoa Powder. Now, in the test, the bloomed Pam's Cocoa Powder won against the same competitor, the Donovan's Premium Dutch Cocoa Powder. Watching this back, I realized it was more of a draw between the bloomed Pams and unbloomed Dutch. But given the Pams is almost half the price of the Dutch, I still think this is a win for the Pams. I just wanted to clarify that. Now, back to the video. Now, you might be thinking two natural cocos won against Dutch cocoa. That's an easy win for natural cocoa. Well, not so fast. Upon further investigation, I noticed that the Pam's cocoa powder listed an ingredient, Acidity Regulator 501. After some research, I found that Acidity Regulator 501 is another term for potassium carbonate. And potassium carbonate is, quote, used in the manufacturing of alkanized cocoa to reduce the acidity of natural cocoa beans and darken cocoa powder. Or, in other words, cocoa powder with acidity regulator is actually Dutch cocoa, or at least something very similar. Remember, according to King Arthur, Dutch cocoa should be darker in colour than natural cocoa. While the colour of the Pams was similar to the Donovan's, the muffins from the Pams cocoa were noticeably darker than the Donovan's, inferring my suspicion that the Pams cocoa is indeed Dutch. Now that we know both the Pams and Sun Valley beat out the Donovan's, it seems like the more important factor when picking out cocoa powder is brand, rather than whether or not the cocoa powder is declared as Dutch cocoa. Another example of this unclear labelling trend is the Cadbury baking cocoa. The packaging and ingredients simply say cocoa powder, nothing to indicate that it's Dutch. However, if you go to the Cadbury website listing for this exact same cocoa powder, it says that this is indeed Dutch cocoa. So it seems like most cocoa powder in New Zealand supermarkets is just Dutch cocoa, whether it's being declared as such or not. Also, not being Dutch in the case of the Sun Valley didn't seem to hurt it, as it still won out against the more expensive Donovan Premium Dutch Cocoa. So, what can we learn from this? It seems like experimenting and finding the best cocoa powder brand you can get your hands on is more important than specifically seeking out cocoa powder that is labelled as Dutch. Also, price may not be the best indicator, as Pam's and Sun Valley are both cheaper than Donovan's. Okay, so now we've answered question number four. Let's loop back around to our other questions. Number one, can you tell the difference between Dutch and natural cocoa powder? Yes, based on our tests and the fact that Hannah and I consistently pick the same winner, you can clearly tell the difference between different cocoa powders. Question two, should you use Dutch or regular cocoa powder? As we discovered, it seems like brand preference is more important than whether or not the cocoa powder is declared as being Dutch, with both the natural Sun Valley and the Dutch-ish pans beating out the Dutch Donovans. Question three, should you bloom your cocoa powder? Yes, absolutely. It requires fairly minimal effort and it made a noticeable difference in both rounds of tests, with bloomed cocoa powder winning out both times. I'm really curious, have you noticed anything unusual about the cocoa powder you've used? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, kaki te anō, and I'll see you next time.